Good morning, sir. Good morning, Jesse. Your topic, Rich God, Poor God. I like the title. What's that about? Rich God, Poor God. Let's start out at the beginning. Is God a God of rich? Is God a God who backs rich people or does God back poor people? Whose play does he back? Whose friend is God? Is he a friend of the rich or a friend of the poor? Does he cause people to be rich or does the devil? Does he cause people to poor or does the devil? We got to know these things because the communists seem to know that all rich people, except the ones who agree with them, of course, are evil. I was, I was, um, Hearing a conversation the other day and someone pointed out that uh, notice how only the Democrat rich people are good. (laughs) And don't poor people all the time want to be rich? And here they are running down the rich people all the time about how evil they are. And then they make songs like, I want to be a billionaire so bad. Yeah, look at all the rappers. That's their whole mission. They sell rap crap to become rich. All the rappers, almost all the rappers talk about is how rich they are. Do you ever hear them talk about how much money, how much of their wealth they're giving to the poor? That's right. They never wrap that. Let's, let's start with the Bible now. Okay. The wealth of Adam. Was Adam a wealthy man? Not only did he own the whole earth, the whole earth was given to him, but he had lots and lots of time. And we know that time, <laughs> time is the greatest wealth, is it not? I'm telling you. With time, anything can be accomplished. That's a very good point about Adam. I've never heard anyone put it that way. Did God run out there real quick and make a bunch of poor people so Adam could give all his wealth to them? This is why you are the Bible go-to guy. When God blesses you, he blesses you with wealth Yeah. in every way. Now, let's move on. All of Adam's sons were wealthy in that they had a large part of the earth. They had can do anything, and they had a lot of time. In the first generations after Abraham, they lived hundreds of years. That's wealth. That's what all the wealthy people would gladly spend their money on if they could buy one more minute worth of time. Yeah. And they, they think they are doing that, you know, with their medicines and stuff. Okay, so then we come along to Abraham. Abraham was very rich. Did you know that? He was the boss over hundreds of people. In fact, he took 300 of his own to go rescue his nephew, Lot. So anyway... Um, Lot was captured. Abraham went to get him, and he couldn't have got him if he was a poor man. He couldn't have said to his neighbors, hey, let's get all our poor sticks and stones and go after him. He was wealthy, and he got a team together, uh, got his nephew back. But he was a rich man. He was very rich, had just camels and sheep and goats, and you have to have all that to feed yeah. all those people that was under him. It's and everywhere he as went— I'm, As I'm hearing you saying this, you don't think of— those people in the Bible being rich, but you're absolutely right about that. Oh, they were rich. For some reason, it's not in the forefront of our mind. They were richer than rich people are today. Show me a prophet of God, and I'll show you a rich man. All those prophets were rich. You can't help but not be rich when you are obeying the laws of common sense. Uh, God is blessing you. Even if you hate God, but you obey the laws of the common sense laws of finance and you know saving your money and investing— you're going to do well. But God blesses above and beyond. He gives blessings both spiritual and physical to his people. He's always promised wealth and prosperity to those who love and follow him. It's amazing how easy wealth comes to those who believe in God and love him and keep his commandment. It's like it just added on to you out of nowhere. It is. But, of course, now we have the poor God, the God who favors the poor. Did not Jesus say, <laughs> I've come for the poor? But if Jesus came for the poor, right, and, and even, even the Apostle Paul said, how many rich people and noble people do we have in our assemblies, in our churches? Not very many. Paul said that? Yes. He said salvation has come more to the poor. But I think it was just a matter of numbers. How many poor people do you have in the world in Paul's time compared to rich people anyway? So let me get some straight here. So Paul made this comment in his church, how many rich people we have or poor people we have in the church, right? Yes. Was he making that to say that it should not be To say that that we shouldn't favor a rich man when he comes into the church. We shouldn't give him the best seat in the house. Oh, I see. That makes sense. We shouldn't treat him any differently than we treat a a, a poor beggar who walks in. Right. We should treat them all the same. All the same. That's right. That's one of the principles the founding fathers used to form the country. Everybody's the same under the law. And a lot of churches do that, too. If you're a doctor or if they think you have money— your seat is reserved and as closest to the preacher as possible. Yes, but, you know, Abraham sent all his other sons away. He gave them gifts, but he sent them away because the inheritance, the bulk of his inheritance was to go to his son Isaac. Now, he could have been a nice little communist and given (laughs) each son the exact amount of his wealth, divided his wealth equally among all his sons. Didn't do that. 
because God said that, that the seed, which would one day um, bring forth the Savior, the seed was to be through his son Isaac, and that was the bulk of the wealth was to go to his seed. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Job was a very rich man. After Job went through his trials and his tribulations, where all his wealth was wiped out and his best friends were on his back, after he went through all of that, God doubled everything that he had before. He, he, he doubled had his everything wealth. and then he lost everything. And then he lost everything. And then God, after he went through all that and didn't betray his love for God, he didn't curse God like his wife wanted him to do. God doubled his wealth. Everything that he had before was doubled. You notice Jesus' ministry wasn't one of making people rich. You know, there was a point in his ministry where they brought him five loaves of bread and two fishes, and he made that in to be able to feed 5,000 men, right. not counting women and children. Yep. And he did that twice. Why didn't he take—and he also made wine, a water into wine, did he not? There's two forms of wealth that Jesus created— why didn't he just, just stop poverty I know. <laughs> amongst the people and just go ahead and create yeah. gold out of wood, gold out of stones that you get? Why didn't he just turn that and, and just solve the poverty problem? He didn't. He got one piece of gold out of a fish's mouth and paid his taxes. <laughs> and, of course, they took in donations and whatever from, from rich people who were following him. Now, Christ said also that it's very rare that a rich man entered the kingdom of heaven. More so would a rich man go through the eye of a needle, he said, than to enter into the kingdom of heaven. And his apostles— And, and that's was, because they put the money before— Yes, yeah, their love what, of money. Right, because, yeah. because why would God put that burden onto Job and onto Joseph? Right. You know, Joseph, the guy sold into slavery. Why would he put that, all that great wealth and power into the, to these men if it was just going to automatically corrupt them? That's right. But it's not the money that's— that's bad. And it's not the great wealth that's bad. It's it's if you love and depend on that more than anything. That's why when Satan said to God, oh, why don't you just grab that wealth from Job? Take his sons, because that's wealth. Take his family. Take his take his, Everything. his body, even his body. Yeah. He, and then he'll curse you to your face. And one interesting thing about the folks of today who pretend to be concerned about the quote-unquote poor, it's not like and they are giving up their wealth to help the poor. It's like they just want to take somebody else's money and give it, quote-unquote, to the poor. So they're not really sincere about helping the poor anyway. And they are very wealthy. They are wealthy themselves, but they do not give their money to the poor. They give somebody else's money. Why, when you go into the forest, do they tell you don't feed the wild animals? You'll make them <laughs> welfare cases. The bears will hang around the people. They'll hang around the campsites. They'll want the freebies, the free food. They won't go out there and hunt for themselves. And if the people move away, you know, like they do in the wintertime, the, the people don't come to the campsites, the bears starve. They're dumb. They've been turned into welfare cases. You don't feed the animals, okay? <laughs> you don't feed poor people either. You, te yeah, that's you right. teach them how to feed themselves. The most favorite example of communism that the left like to use is the book of Acts. When Peter, after Pentecost, the church was increasing greatly because of the power and um, words of the apostles. There came a point where people were so glad to be brought into the kingdom. They were giving their wealth away. They were selling their land and their property and bringing it in and says they had all things in common. They held things in common. Now, does that mean that people stopped working? Oh, yeah, we got the rich folks came in and give us free bread. Now we just sit around. <laughs> that actually was starting to happen, which is why Paul said this wealth is not supposed to be for people who just sit around and wonder about spiritual things all day and then, yeah. then want to be fed. They just sit around and philosophize about life. He says, if you don't work, you don't eat. He's telling the poor folks this. He's yeah. telling the rich folks this. He's telling everybody in his church, if you don't work, you don't eat. Because everybody can do some kind of work. Something. Everybody can do something. Yeah. Let me ask, uh, was Jesus rich or poor? A lot of folks think he was poor. Well, here's here's where we come into the finale here. Jesus was rich and poor. Explain. Um, a while back, there was a gentleman named uh, Mr. Walton. He started a company called Walmart, and he became very, very wealthy as a billionaire, as a as a multi billionaire. He yeah, I saw. Became it. very wealthy. I saw the history if of his life. If you looked at his personal lifestyle, you would think <laughs> he actually went out and worked for a living. I mean, you know, the way we work nine to five, the clock kind of thing. Right. You know, the way the average guy the average guy works. You would think he had a a used Chevy truck 
a small home. He didn't have scores of limousines parked outside. He didn't have a lavish lifestyle. You would think he was poor or, or, or just middle class. He didn't flaunt his wealth. Jesus didn't flaunt his wealth. Jesus was poor in the sense he didn't flaunt his wealth, but he had everything you could possibly want. Jesus, first of all, was a ki- is a king. How many kings do you know who are poor? Do you know many? It's so amazing. Jesus is a king. Jesus had angels ministering him to his every need. Wow. Jesus could go 40 days and 40 nights without eating and drinking anyway. So he didn't have many needs. Well, you got to be rich to be able to do that. Jesus could make water into wine, fish and bread into lots of fish and bread. He could take gold out of fish to pay his taxes. He knew even when and where to fish. Remember when his apostles said, oh, we were out all night and didn't catch anything. He said, okay, go out gay far, throw your net over on that side, and you're going to get some fish. You're going to get a lot. Well, they got a lot of fish. He had the power over the seas and the wind. That that could be sold for some money. Um, (laughs) He raised the dead, healed the sick, and the crippled. Some other doctors of his day, other rich, wealthy doctors of day couldn't do. Do you know how wealthy you could be if he would charge for all that? He just let the people donate what they wanted after they were healed or whatever. Then they would come back and give him gifts, him and his people. Right. So, you, And he had a pretty big following. But what they're basing it on is when uh, Jesus said that the Son of God has nowhere to lay his head. And they also say that Jesus traveled around in old clothes. You know, he would just have his robe on. Okay. And he, I, I guess he rode around on a donkey or something. Do you remember? They're basing it on that, well, that yes. he had no house or anything. That was voluntary to show that he doesn't need that stuff. He's not into that stuff. But just like the children of Israel, when they were in the desert 40 years and their clothes didn't decay, Jesus always had fresh apparel on. <laughs> he may not have changed his clothes, but they were always fresh. It's one of those miracle things. Um, I just figured the guy was traveling around. There were no airplanes. Oh, by the way. There were no buses. So he couldn't go back home. Why have a house? And he had a mode of transportation. (laughs) Talk about wealth. Jesus had a mode of transportation unknown. Even even today. What was that? He could walk across water. Uh, Okay. How many people can do that? Even today, he could be in one place and then appear in another place after he gave you a head start. He would be there before you. He'd give you a couple days head start, which in those days you didn't overcome. And he would be there ahead of you. When Jesus said the poor shall be with you always... He meant what? Well, in my opinion, it's like saying the evil will be with you always. Because I'm thinking if the poor are going to be here anyway, why even bother feeding them? <laughs> because it's good, good for point? us. It's good for us to be to be generous. Oh. He leaves poor people around so we have something to work with. Well, that, well, that's one thing the Democrats have done very well. For the last 50 years, they brought black people to uh, a mentality of being poor so they'll have something to work with. That's for sure. One of the reasons, and I talk about this Sunday in my service, there are people out there keeping them from waking up to God. From They, they are keeping them asleep spiritually. They won't wake up, and that's what's keeping them poor. We have about two and a half minutes left. Bob, go to God. You wanted to respond to yesterday assault on you by some of the callers <laughs> because you were telling black people the truth. Yes, and they come back with the the sin they've been getting away with for 50 years. Um, and that is that you don't know me like that. Why, or, or white people shouldn't tell white black people. White people can't the truth. tell black people yeah. anything that they're doing wrong because we just haven't been in their shoes. My great-great-grandpappy wasn't a slave, so I, I just can't speak up to them at all. I, I, I've not walked in black shoes, so I can't talk to them about anything. But Jesse's black. And when Jesse starts talking bad about black people, they tell him, well, why don't you mention white people? But by your own rules, he can't talk about white people. That's right. But they don't see that logic. Very good point, man. Um, We can even take that idiocy to even further. We can't question our doctor because we haven't been to med school. A man can't question a woman about her wanting to have an abortion because we've never been pregnant. Uh, Jesus can't talk about us because he's never been a sinner. Right. So, I mean. That's why you're the Bible go-to guy. Give me a break. Right on.